Scott Brown here. Have you ever wondered if you could go completely cordless on a job site? Well, in today's exciting episode, we explore that very question. All oh, right. So that's one thing you cannot get around when it comes to cordless tools, batteries. And the fact that you need to charge all the batteries. This one's broken. So in today's exciting episode, we're gonna see how difficult is it to get a complete setup on a job with no power, no plug-in power. It's time. It's time to lose our power. The switchboard here is moving. Not by much, it's only moving over here. And that'll allow us to have the door pretty much centered behind me. Kitchen cabinet's going there, kitchen cabinet's going there, door in the middle. So that's in the way. How far until the uh, power company gets here? Another 45 minutes. We've got Possibly. time to charge the last few batteries. I did it in my <laughs> So, the important things. The things that maybe I was a little bit late to the party on. The drop saw and uh, vacuum. What I mean by being late to the party is when I first tried out the battery drop saws, I sort of came to the conclusion that it's almost more difficult to have a drop saw battery powered because it's a stationary item anyway, so you don't have that advantage of being able to move the tool around. You know, it just stays there. So being cordless is a little bit, but you know, maybe you're watching this and you need a cordless tool for whatever reason. Maybe you work out in the bush somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's just an item you need. Every now and then for us, like today, it's an item we need. And I think a theme here that's uh, going to come up a lot in this episode is me doubting battery tools and them exceeding my expectations. This is a good example of that. So this is a full 4 amp 40 volt. We'll see how it goes all day, shall we? It's also the vacuum cleaner that made me wonder whether you needed cordless because you plug in a vacuum cleaner then you plug your drops or into it and again it just stays there. But again They've come out with cordless vacuum cleaners like this one right here. I'm going to chuck the word advertisement right here because Makita gave me this yesterday and some of these tools, I'll mention them as I go. That drop saw, for example, Makita gave it to me. So, you know, they didn't pay me for the video, but it should be, it should be noted. Put a charge. So this is the first time I've had the Bluetooth uh, drop saw and vacuum combo, so I'm pretty excited. Um, one thing I like about this particular drop saw... More and more of these um, Makita tools are coming out with that little Bluetooth chip there. You put the chip in there and um, has that same functionality where you can connect the hose. I know other brands are working on that as well and have some tools out, so these are just the ones that I've been using. It's more about can we go cordless on the whole job site, not what brand should we use. Yeah. So when I realized that I'm gonna have to go cordless all day today, I hit up Milwaukee and asked if I could borrow a table saw. Fully charged 12 amp battery as well. And then of course, there's everything else. All the other grinders and skill saws and drills. Drills are, I guess, what everybody knows is good cordless. I feel like everything else is getting pretty damn good as well. This multi-tool is um, fast becoming my favorite. It's the Starlock Plus uh, Bosch multi-tool. And again, this is one of those tools that has been cordless for a while and um, should be cordless because, you know, look how handy that is. You run around with it. You don't want to drag a cord with you. That's the power company here to disconnect our power. So is that the power off? Power's off. Power's off. And this is 
Gonna be a cavity slider here. So Pilot's framing it up. Get out of the way. Sorry, sorry. Now when it comes to tools that we use sort of often, that need a bit more power, a hammer drill is right up there. This is real useful for breaking up stuff. I'm gonna start breaking up these tiles in the kitchen. We're gonna go back to sort of wooden flooring, whether it's the original wooden flooring or some engineered overlay flooring. Let's see how good this is at breaking up the tiles, shall we? Just emptied that bucket, and that bucket's full, that bucket's full. A lot of them came off easily, and that would probably help explain why this is still <laughs> at four bars. So it's not a true test of its um, capacity, but let's keep going, there's more to take off. Typical uh, New Zealand renovation. Vinyl under uh, underlay, under tiles. I go outside. One very important thing to consider when you find old vinyl is whether or not it contains asbestos glue underneath. So I went and got this tested a couple weeks ago when we saw it as we took that kitchen bench out and it came back negative. No asbestos, so safe. Oh. Well, Pato, you have an opening. What do you reckon of the 40 volt reciprocating saw, Pato? I love it. Yeah? It's awesome. No restriction, no uh, problem with the cordless? Nah, it's good, bro. So reciprocating saws were one of the first cordless tools that I doubted. Probably about three or four years ago when I only had like cordless drills and multi-tools. The 18 volt of this is really good and this one's even more powerful. No restrictions with cordless reciprocating saws, none at all. We used this all day yesterday and uh, we didn't have to change the batteries, so I think it'll be the same again today. How's the electrical puzzle going, Nate? No, all right. Yeah? Yeah. Some serious looking cable you have there. Thanks. <laughs> Where's the camera? Don't know. Oh, oh it was in the corner before. Is it one of those hidden cam shows? Yeah. yeah. Mm. What is that called? OnlyFans. <laughs> so the main cable was a bit short, a meter short, so you had to extend it and join it. That's right. Yep. Have I got that right, Nate? I'm on yeah, top of it? Do. That's right. Not That's right. Nice. I'm happy about that. You happy there, Pato? How's that wrist? Nah, get away. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pato's been break dancing. Yeah. Again? Again. Alright, Pato. We're about lunchtime now. Let's see what our batteries are like. There you go. Two bars. So we've used half of a 2.5 amp battery. And while we've got the electrician here, actually, this is a good idea. Um, no. bro, this is a, <laughs> this is a 2.5 amp, right? That's right. And we've got a 4 amp that we're not using on this, that we could have used, but whatever. Can you explain w how the amp thing works again? I'm like totally lost. I don't know what's going on with it. The voltage of the 4 amp battery. 40 volt. Both of them are. Uh, the, f the 40, the 4 amp, you'll be able to run at a higher, I don't know bro, I'm making it up now. <laughs> I can make it up to you, but I can't make it up to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got the 2.5 amp, and we use half of it, and we took up all of this. I mean, there's, there's some more to go, nearly there, and we've still got some battery left, so that's good. And let's check the gear outside. Four bars there. 
and yeah it's like four bars still but that's just cutting every now and then but that's how we use it you know this is like a real world test it's not a like extensive test and there's six amp batteries Oh, yeah. Four bars, full bars. Yep. So still got full bars. We're halfway through a pretty typical day for us. Bit of framing, bit of demo. And um, battery's still going strong. Um, I might have to replace my battery. We'll see how we go. I've got some more tiles to pull up. But so far, so good. This here is a bit of native timber. It's rough sawn, it's bowed, it's got nails in it. And it's just, it's generally tougher than the stuff we use nowadays. So I figure this is probably a good test for the table saw. Let's see if we can rip it out. I'll pull out some of the obvious nails first. Hopefully Morky won't mind. Because I'm very likely to cut a nail. We're doing it for science, okay? There's a nail there. You know, we wouldn't typically rip timber like this without pulling all the nails out. As you can see, we cut two. But there's a noticeable change in power. You get more power out of the electric one. But it did rip it. What do you reckon our chances of having power this afternoon are? Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. No, that's not. <laughs> nah, pretty high. Pretty high? Yeah. Pretty high. Looks awfully technical there. It is. Yeah. Not, not that technical. It's pretty messy. Tidy up someone else's mess. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that timber flooring. So it's 2021 and I like to think in 10 years, 2031, someone will stumble upon this video and be like, of course cordless tools are the way to go. Of course you can be cordless. It seems to be going that way, that's what I think anyway. The big elephant in the room is price and maybe in 10 years this will be less relevant and that's why everyone will use it. But for now, it's a lot more expensive to get cordless than it is to get corded. So for example, that hammer drill that I've been using all day is 600 New Zealand dollars without the batteries. And if you multiply that by each and every tool, how, how badly do you want cordless tools? But that, that all come down. I remember when they first came out, they were very expensive and they've already come down. If you're a highly mobile team, kind of like what we are, and maybe you're rural, maybe you don't have access to power all the time, maybe switchboards get moved around a lot on your jobs. Um, yeah, would you go cordless? How badly do you want to go cordless? The other cordless tools that I've been using for ages and have, haven't gone back to corded would be the planer. As soon as I bought this, I put away my corded one and I've never used it again. And this hasn't lacked in any way. Um, this one, I've talked about this in previous videos, we have been ripping with this circular saw and it's been great. It rips timber no problem. You got the vacuum attachment, it's, yeah, we don't need corded for that either. So, yeah. Like I said, it's going that way. Wow. Maybe we should be using the pointy one rather than the chisel one. You go on the chisel like that and then you twist, you know? Oh, you're against what it is? Potentially. Time, potentially. I mean, it, this is a very old bit. Yeah. I'll grab the other oh. bit. Good flat, eh? Slashing one bar. Look at all that. Literally just finished the job. Oh well, that's pretty impressive. What do you think? I think so. It's pretty good. Good job, two and a half amp. Proud of you. Proud of you. Doing a great job. And there's all the uh, stuff that we... I hope the driver can pick it up. Yeah, we'll pick it up. Let there be 
Light. <laughs> you did it, Nate. Thank you. I did. Did you doubt yourself for any moment? Never. Never any doubt. I never doubted it either. <laughs> We're still on four bars on the drop saw. We didn't really use it too much today. But look how much better it works with the vacuum. Very little dust. And that's the sound of Pido vacuuming. Vacuum still going with those same two batteries. The answer is yes. You can power a building site off batteries alone. Okay. Oh yeah, pretty much half an hour. This is the battery that we used on the hammer drill. Half an hour it charged. I never bring my batteries home, but in light of what happened today, it was the only choice we had. Yeah, so today worked out well. I still remember a time where if you had no power on site, that was a day off. And now, as long as you charge your batteries up, <laughs> like this, you can work all day. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next exciting episode.